Hello and welcome back to Talkin' Maya. Today I saw a comment on the Maya subreddit about animating the opacity of AI skin. This tells me that they were in 2017 or earlier with Arnold 4. So we're going to start off there with a new material, AI skin. First thing to know about Arnold, if you want transparency, you need to turn off the opaque setting under the node of the shape of the object that you'd like. And then we can head back to the skin and quickly see that the weight of opacity does not work. So let's make sure that that's not just an Arnold thing. All right, go back to our skin here. Okay, so it doesn't update in viewport viewpoint viewport 2.0, <laughs> but uh, under the render view, it does in fact animate away. In order to animate this, you just need to right click and set key. Move over your time slider, give it the weight of zero in this case, and you'll see that over the course of one second, it now disappears. Fun, fun, silly wooly. However, I do want to move over to 2018, where things get a little bit different. Since we're going from Arnold 4 to Arnold 5, a couple of key things are a little, a little funny. The same procedure is applied here. You need to make sure that you're uh, sphere is not opaque, and then we will assign a new material of standard surface. This has the preset of skin, which sort of deprecates the AI skin from before. Let's see, here we're going to go ahead and add our light, our physical sky. Let's head back over to AI standard surface and look under the geometry tab here. This is where you're going to find your opacity setting. Now you can see it's a little bit more integrated in uh, 2018. We can actually see what's going on with our Arnold texture. Now, one of the quirks about the transition is that uh, skin is blue now. I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it has something to do with physical sky shining a blue light on the ball and that the uh, there's, there's not really uh, a diffuse color to counteract that. Specular only has a white reflection, and the subsurface has some strong colors, but, I mean, for whatever reason, oh, if we turn the scale down, it actually turns it more of the correct color. So, anyway, I'll have to explore that a little bit more. That's not the point of this video. Same procedure as before. You set the key on frame 1, move over to frame 24, reduce it down to 0, set key once more. You'll notice down here that we don't have any keyframes showing up. That's simply because we need to... Interesting. Suddenly, it doesn't want to... Uh, <laughs> doesn't want to give, give up the goods anymore. Huh. Interesting. However, you can see that it is animating into oblivion. Previous to this, I was able to see changes. Uh -huh, here we go. When in doubt, always reload the tab. So this is actually the animation that these are the uh, different um, keyframes that we've applied to the opacity setting. So all you have to do to see them is select this kind of uh, node or object or whatever it is. So from there, you can go into your Windows general animation editors and get your graph editor. And you can play around with the different uh, methods of going back and forth. One thing that does kind of crop up with this is certain methods of doing this are apparently better than others. If you keyframe the color using, um, so instead of having straight keyframes, if you were to uh, use a uh, color input and keyframe those colors, you can actually keyframe all three channels of R, G, and B. And that seems to be more consistent than this method for infinity looping of visibility. But um, a little outside the scope of this, so we're going to just keep it here. The last thing I want to go over, however, has to do with the uh, another comment that the original poster put into their to themselves, basically, where um, they were wondering uh, either about making it transparent or about switching between materials, which was really what sparked this whole adventure. So. There is a, a utility shader called AI Mix Shader. 
I've noticed you can't just connect it up willy-nilly for whatever reason. I it's just, it just works properly if you create a texture from from the get-go. Um, don't make a liar out of me. I've had some issues with this, but uh, if you play Maya's game, it works fairly well. So we're gonna take a standard shader and a wireframe and mix them together in an AI mix shader. We'll go ahead and grab our sphere here and smash this guy on there. Take a look in our render view. So I have the mix shader, we're at 50%. We're at 100% on wireframe, 50% in general. If we go back, we've got this kind of awful white hole. <laughs> oh boy. Let's give this a different preset of, let's say, copper. Now it's doing that thing like it did before. So, in that case, let's go ahead and reset ourselves. So, Got a sphere. This, is, this seems to be a very finicky little shenaniganery here, where you will create a standard surface. Okay, that's looking more appropriate. Oh boy. And let's add our wireframe. All right. So now you can see between the mix shadow, or between the uh, shader mixer thingy dilly, you can go between a fully standard surface, you can go between a, a wireframe, or you can have a little bit of both. And you can see the presets do work now. If we get copper, it gets this uh, highly reflective, very specular surface. And if we go to our wireframe and adjust some of these, put this polygons, set this to some sort of uh, blue and purple situation, we now get the mixture between the two accurately. So we can go full wireframe, we can go full copper, or you can have something just right in between. So, hope you learned something today. Uh, this is definitely a finicky little thing. You may have to work a couple times to get it to work. It seems that applying a mix shader and applying it to the object in question is the quickest and simplest, most consistent way to do it rather than building the whole affair and then applying it afterwards. Something about standard surface just does not work well if it doesn't immediately like plug into the, uh, the, uh, the shader. So anywho, I just want to showcase those two things because at this point you can then, um, you can actually set keys on your mix weight. So if we go to frame 24 and we give the slider all the way to the right, Set that key now. So you can actually animate between materials. Whoop, oh boy. It's always something, isn't it, Maya? <laughs> anyway, so um, you can daisy chain this sort of situation if you were to make another mix shader, at least in theory. You could take the out color of this as the shader one. Sorry. And take another. Wait, let's, let's follow our own advice here. We'll take AI Mixer two. There we go. Now we'll take a standard surface. Right, right. What did I just say? Just play Maya's game. Create a new standard surface. And we'll give this something weird like a balloon preset. Perfect. So this original one, let's go ahead and go to the wireframe side of the affair. <laughs> All right, maybe daisy chaining wasn't the best idea, but you get the gist. AI mix shader allows you to animate between two or more materials. So I'm gonna end it there. And I hope you guys learned something. Hope that, uh, don't do what I do. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.